Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, over the last week, the rest of the Wilds of Eldraine spoilers have come out, and now we're going to take a look at them. So, I'm going to just scan forward a little bit, and we're going to just touch on the ones that we have not talked about already. So, let's just get into it. Okay, so here's our first one that we have not seen yet. So, this is called A Tale for the Ages. So, I'm, I'm really feeling like a, just like, almost like this sub theme of like just this entire set is a play it's like they're, they're they're telling all these grand stories on a stage which really makes sense with the roles mechanic yeah very interesting so what this says is an enchantment for one in a white enchanted creatures you control get plus two plus two Okay, that's very simple, very straightforward. It reminds me of um, Tempered Steel from the, the original Meriden block. What that would do, I believe it was a three um, casting cost enchantment, and it gave all artifact creatures plus two, plus two. But this one, I can understand it being a little bit cheaper, simply because it's only going to buff creatures that are enchanted. And... A thing to remember here is that roll tokens that are attached to creatures, they are auras. That means they're enchantments. So this is clearly something that wants to be played in the roll archetype deck. So look out for that one if you are looking to maximize on the uh, on the roll tokens. So this is the Elusive Otter. For one blue mana, you get a 1-1 one, one Otter. So... First off, great creature type. Love it. It has prowess, which means whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus and plus one until in a turn. And creatures with power less than elusive otter's power can't block it. Okay, so this definitely wants to be played in a spell slinger style deck. And the adventure it comes with is called Grove's Bounty for X and a green. Sorcery adventure. Distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control. Wow, that's actually really damn good. It's like you usually see effect like this give out maybe two or three, maybe four plus one plus one counters. Um, but that usually costs like four or five mana to cast. This one's variable, and you can just put it on whichever creatures you want, um, or stack them all on a single creature. That's honestly a pretty decent uh, pump spell. It would only be better if it was instant speed. Not a big fan of sorceries, especially sorceries that would be better as a um, uh, as a combat trick. Yeah, so decent. Um, I like the creature side. Um, just because it has the prowess and the unblockability. I think the guy's bounty is just kind of like gravy on top of that. So this is the Pollen Shield Hair. It's a 2-2 two -two creature for one and a white. And it has the uh, adventure called Hair Raising. It's a sorcery, again. Target creature you control gains vigilance and gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. That's actually really, really good for only a one green mana. It's like if your creature has any form of um, evasion, if it has like flying or unblockable or even trample, that is really, really solid. Especially if you're playing like a um, like a token, like go wide style deck. That's really good. What does a creature do though? Uh, two, two for two. Creature tokens you control. Yeah, yeah. So I thought play this in a creature but in, in a token build yeah creature tokens you control get plus and plus one yeah pretty good pretty good i like that one a lot is it's very well costed has a great effect and the adventure doesn't suck it's pretty good seek questing druid i don't remember if we saw this one or not so we'll just read it anyways uh one in a green for a one one whenever you cast a spell that's white blue black or red put a plus one plus one counter on questing druid Seek the Beast is an instant adventure. Exile the top two cards of your library until end of your next end step. You may play those cards. Okay, so it's a 1-1 one, one that gets bigger. It wants you to play multicolor. It wants you to maybe even play domain. And it has an impulse draw on it. So yeah, that's actually pretty damn decent. 
yeah i i i would probably just play this in like maybe even like a a three color deck um i don't remember if, if i saw wrinkles prank yet or not i think i did i think we talked about it in a previous one but i i'll just take this moment to reiterate you're going to be seeing a lot of wrinkles prank just even if all you choose is each player sacrifices two creatures that's just barter and blood all over again the extra effects are just great like it i personally would probably throw this into a um into a discard deck maybe even like a symmetrical discard deck where you want to be discarding your own cards because you're going to be reanimating um play this with uh liliana the veil various other discard effects um and just empty your hand uh pretty quickly um or even just empty it down to like one and like the only thing you're having left is like a reanimation effect but yeah that i can't say enough good things about that that's for only four mana you're getting a lot for your for your money there this is restless vine stock and it is a land, comes to play tapped, and it gives you blue or green. And its animation is three colorless, a green, and a blue. Until end of turn, Restless Vine Stock becomes a 5-5 green and blue plant creature. With Trample, it's still a land. And whenever Vine Stock attacks, up to one other target creature has base power and toughness 3-3 three, three until end of turn. So it not only animates into a 5-5 five, five Trampler, but it also pumps up one of your other lesser creatures. So you got like a 1-1 one, one or a 1-2 sitting on the battlefield. It just pumps it up a little bit. So yeah, I like that one a lot. Yeah, um, i say my favorite of, the, um, of these lands is probably the Restless Spire. Um, just because of the scry effect and the fact that it's a 2-1 uh, first strike on the attack. Like... First strike is not to be underestimated. But yeah, I really like the Restless Spire. The Restless Vine Stock's pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, Song of Totentons. Uh, this is a newer one. It's a X red sorcery. Create X 1 1 black rat creature tokens with this creature can't block. Creatures you control gain haste until in a turn. So, another great role player card for the, um, for the rats deck. Um, even if you're not playing the rat stack, um, just, you can just cast this for a single red and give all your creatures haste for the turn, um, or pump some mana into it, make some guys. I mean, honestly, you don't even have to play this in a Rakdos stack. You can just play this in a red deck and just throw a bunch of tokens out onto the table. It's like, you just create all the tokens. The second part of the card gives all those tokens haste. You could use this as like a Hail Mary final attack in mono red. Or um, preferably play this in like Naya tokens. Play it with uh, Ginny Fey. Have all those creatures come into play as um, as like the 3-1 th the Vigilance dog tokens. Give them all haste and start swinging. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I like it. That's all I got to say. It's good. Okay, here's one we have not seen yet. So this is called the Gingerbread Hunter. It is a, a giant with a an adventure on it. And it's for four colors and a green. You get a 5-5. Five, five. When Gingerbread Hunter enters the battlefield, create a food token. Okay, awesome. So he comes in with a food token. You can play that in Celebrations. So you get the Celebration effect immediately just by casting the card. Its adventure is called Puny Snack. For two and a black, instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus two, until the turn. Okay, not bad. It's um, it's overcosted for sure. Um, but it's an adventure that's attached to a creature that you can play out later. Um, it only giving minus two, minus two is not the worst thing. I mean, it's not great. You could probably see this in some draft decks. Uh, you probably will not be seeing this in standard or any form of constructed. Um, but just the fact that it has a form of removal attached to a big creature kind of makes it almost playable. Graceful takedown. So for one in a green, we have a sorcery. Any number of target enchanted creatures you control and up to one other target creature you control each deal damage equal to their power 
to target creature you don't control. Wow. That that's just gonna be like we're gonna take down anything, period. So any so you can choose like five enchanted creatures plus one that doesn't happen to be enchanted and say everybody strike that everybody just kill it that is a very interesting um uh fight card well it's not even a fight card it's a strike card um but what i find interesting about this is that even if you don't have any enchanted creatures you can still play this card with its like extra creature that it throws in so like even if you don't have any enchanted creatures you still have a removal spell in your hand so this i think is really good because it does a lot but it doesn't need a lot to do something so i like that a lot yeah good good card this is the high fey negotiator for three and two black you get a three five fairy warlock that's bargain, which means you can sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast this spell. It's flying. When High Fey Negotiator enters the battlefield, if it was bargained, each opponent loses three life and you gain three life. Okay, that's honestly not too bad. I mean, just the fact that it enables your sacrifices with bargain. It's already a flyer, and when it comes in, it steals three life from your opponent if you bargained it. So decent needs to be built around for sure um but typically for five mana i think i would have a better time just playing junji or any of like the like the five mana dragons or anything like that i don't think i would play this over something more effective in standard but draft definitely see that poking up in like those black and white um enchantment sacrifice decks so yeah so there's a two two for a blue and a black flash flying whenever another fairy enters the battlefield yeah we did see that one so that one is kind of in an aristocracy style fairy and not too bad either i mean it's it's flash and flying and it's a two two for only two mana i mean if we didn't even have that last part it would still be playable simply because of the flash and flying. Yeah, pretty good. This is the Red Tooth Vanguard. So for one in a green, you get a 3-1 Elf Warrior. Trample. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two. If you do, return Red Tooth Vanguard from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so it's a form of recursion. I mean, it doesn't come back into the battlefield itself. It goes to hand, so it's not that great. If it came directly into play, then then we could talk. But coming back to hand at a cost of two mana instead of being like a free, I think I would rather just play something else. Probably like um, well, granted it's in black, not in green. But the um, the little two one skeleton that comes back from the graveyard. If you um, if an if a non skeleton creature died this turn, pay a couple mana, put it back onto the table. Yeah, that's a little bit better than this. But maybe you can build around um, something that wants you to play it from hand. So there are possibilities, but this is probably just something you're going to be seeing in, um, in draft. So this is two and a white for an enchantment. When Solitary Sanctuary enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. Wow, that's actually really good. Uh, yeah, so you stun something. Whenever you tap an untapped creature and opponent controls, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Oh, so it steals vitality as well. That's not bad. That can definitely be a role player in the white blue uh, tapping stuff matters deck. The the Frost Queen deck. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, Storm Keld Vanguard. For four colorless and two green, you get a six seven. And Storm Curled Vanguard can't be blocked by creatures with power two less. Okay, so is a weird form of evasion. Bear Down is, is the adventure attached to it. One in a green, destroy target artifact or chip. Oh, okay, this is this is decent. I mean, even if you never cast the creature later on, it comes attached to a disenchant, a color shifted disenchant. Yeah, no, that that's. That's good. I mean, honestly, it this could just be this could just be printed as a disenchant, 
um, but being attached to a beefy beater, not too bad. I think you'll definitely be seeing that in uh, draft pods. Definitely. 3 2 Tenacious Tome Seeker, Human Knight. It's a bargain. And it says, when Tenacious Tome Seeker enters the battlefield, if it was bargained, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like a, an archivist. Um, but you don't have, have to pay like five mana to do it. You just pay, uh, pay three, sacrifice like a food token or, or something silly, and bam. You just get, get a, a relevant spell back to your hand. Yeah, it's not bad. I like it. Ooh, the witch's vanity. I've not seen this yet. So this is a saga for one and a black. Destroy target creature and opponent controls with mana value two or less. Okay, so first off, it's a smother. Part two is create a food token. All right. And then last is create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. This is garbage. Yeah, this is this is uh, a whole lot of nothing. Like, the only way I can see this scene play is in, like, the rolls deck. And even then, you're not playing this in, in, like, constructed. You're playing this in, like, maybe casual. Casual constructed, maybe. Um, you'll probably see a few of these floating around in your draft pods, because I don't think a whole lot of people take it right off the bat. Granted, it is removal. It's very... Um, narrow removal creates a food token and creates a roll token attached to a creature and if you don't have any creatures when you get to part three that part three is just completely wasted so yeah i'm not a fan not a fan at all i think it's kind of garbage one and a blue instant until end of turn target creature you control has base power and toughness four four and gains flying and expert okay so this is just the newest in a pretty long line of these blue transformation spells. Like, you've seen this in, uh, what was it, Martian Machines. You've seen this in New Capenna. You've seen this in many sets. This effect gets repeated about as often as the, um, as the, the black card that usually says the next time this creature would die, put it back on the battlefield. It's like... That's the repeated effect in blue. So it's not a bad effect either. I mean, if you just need to finish the game and give something flying uh, until in a turn to get over your opponent's blockers, I mean, it's pretty decent. Um, you'll see it in draft. You will not see it in standard. Mm -mm. This is called Aquatic Alchemist. It is a 1-3 elemental for one and a blue. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, Aquatic Alchemist gets plus two plus so into a turn. Okay, so it pumps itself when you cast spells. Uh, bubble up, two and a blue, sorcery adventure. Put target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. Okay, it's crap. Yep, it's, it's draft chaff. Um, it's a card that you're going to want to draft alongside um, all of the other spells matters cards. Like the this... This archetype is definitely leaning into the whole Sorcerer's Apprentice uh, tale. And I kind of like it. I, I, I like, I've always liked that story growing up um, and seeing it kind of actualized with magic cards is really funny. So I, I do like it. I love the art. The art is fantastic. Um, as far as the Spells Matter theme, I think it can work. There's some of these cards you're not going to be playing, obviously, but I really think like like a Prowess Spells Matter style deck can absolutely work. You just got to choose like the right handful of creatures to run it with. We have Archon's Glory. We have one white mana, instant bargain. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If this spell was bargained, that creature also gains flying and lifelink until end of turn. Okay, yeah, it's it's not bad. Um, play it alone as just a 2-2 two, two combat trick. You can bargain it to get like the extra effects. And in some cases, you will. I mean, even if you're just sacrificing a, um, a roll token to get that added effect. Um, I do like that bargain is being used as an alternative 
alter alternate kicker cost so you can use these effects without spending all of your mana so i like that a lot four and a green for a five four reach nothing to write home about what's the story though plant beams one and a green sorcery you may play an additional land this turn honestly the plant beans is decent i probably wouldn't play it myself because for the exact same cost you can get um the um azusa saga which also does the effect of um putting an extra land in a play but also does extra stuff like giving you another creature free of cost and giving you three extra life so i'd probably play that over beanstalk worm that makes sense though it's a common it's nothing really crazy so let's check out the belly and bruiser so for four four at four colors and a, and a red haste okay not bad uh beat a path two and a red sorcery adventure up to two target creatures can't block this turn okay it's it's all right it's all right it's no, nothing crazy uh let's see balloon is gatekeeper six five vanilla creature for six banana and then we have entry denied one and a blue return target creature you don't control with mana value three or less to its owner's hand okay the cost i can understand because it's attached to a creature so you're kind of like you're paying like a convenience cost here but if i'm just bouncing a creature i'm going to use fading hope because that gives me scry if I happen to bounce something that is three or less. This one will only allow you to bounce something that is three or less. So it's a lot more restrictive. So yeah, F Fading Hope will definitely still be getting play over something like Baluna's Gatekeeper. Bespoke Battle Guard. Let's see this. One in red, artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus so. Celebration. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, attach Bespoke Battle Guard to up to one target creature you control. Okay, that's good. That's really good. So, the celebration effect, making it so you can just attach it immediately. You don't have to pay the equip cost. Give something plus two plus zero. The card itself only costs two mana to put into play. It's like, it's good. I like it a lot. Yeah. Bestial Bloodline. One and a green. Enchant creature aura. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two. And then four and a green. Return Bestial Bloodline from your graveyard to your hand. It's trash. Yep. This is more draft chaff. It's it's way too expensive to bring back from the graveyard. Um, for plus two plus two, I would want this to cost only a single green. But we can't have everything we want, right? So... It's more draft, Jeff. Candy Grapple. Okay, this is new. This is one and a black instant. It has bargain. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until on a turn. If this spell was bargained, that creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, again, we're seeing that bargain is just an alternative to kicker. So a card like this would probably say like, you pay like three more mana to kick it. But keeping your mana free and open and just paying the cost by throwing away like a blood token or a roll token to get the added effect, I like it a lot. Yeah. I I really think bargain is my favorite mechanic out of this entire set. So yeah. Minus three, minus three, or minus five, minus five. Not bad. What's the flavor text say? Don't you mean poisonous? There's no such thing as a venomous. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it's a venomous apple. That's cute. Curse of the Werefox. Two and a green. Sorcery. Create a monster roll token attached to target creature control. When you do, that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Okay. Uh, you know, I actually like this. Like, out of all of the um, fight effects or, like, alternate fight effects, like, say, like, um, Epic Confrontation. Gives you a bonus if you cast it during your main phase instead of on like on your opponent's turn. This is an interesting twist on that. It costs a little bit though. It's, it's pretty expensive for a fight effect. Typically, a fight effect is going to cost you two, not three. But this one gives you a monster roll token, which gives plus one plus one and trample. And that trample can be very useful, especially 
if you're starting your turn by casting this on a big creature you already have to just kick something out of the way. I think it's pretty decent. I don't know if it's going to see any main deck play, but it's it's decent. I'll say that. Arias Whisper. Okay, here we go. Arias Whisper, three and a black, sorcery. Target opponent discards two cards, create a wicked roll token attached to up to one target creature you control. Okay, that's not bad. It's too expensive for what you're doing here. Um, this kind of effect needs to only cost three. When you are doing a mind rot effect and you make it cost four, you're not really going to want people to play it. Um, for that much mana, you are going to want to be the one who chooses what your opponent discards. So I don't think this is going to see any play, despite the fact that it comes with a wicked roll token. All right, there's Evolving Wilds. Feed the Cauldron. What's this? All right. Feed the Cauldron. Two and a black. Instant. Destroy target creature with mana value three or less. If it's your turn, create a food token. Okay. So this is a smother and a food token all wrapped up in one. So that's actually not bad. Typically, you're going to be paying one more mana to cast an existing spell with a benefit. So like in this case, Feed the Cauldron is a functional reprint of Smother, and Smother only costs two. This costs three because it allows you to put a uh, food token into play. So that's why the, the extra cost here, I'm not too worried about. As opposed to the extra effect on Ariat's Whisper, like this effect... It's a good effect, but it's just a little bit too much because all you're getting is like a, a roll token. With with this, you're getting a food token, and food tokens can be um, manipulated and changed um, in ways that a single enchantment aura can't. Like, say you have a Tezzeret, and Tezzeret will animate your food token into a 4-4 attacker. You can't really do that with a, a roll token. So that's just one example. Fell Horseman here. So for four mana, we got a 3-3. Three, three. When Fell Horseman dies, put it on the bottom of its own library. Okay. And then Deathly Ride, one and a black sorcery adventure. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. It's just a, it, it's just a raised dead. It's a raised dead and it has a 3-3 three, three on the backside. So I'm not too excited about this. Ferocious Werefox. Three colorless, one green for four, three trample. Okay, not bad. And then guard change, one and a green. Instant adventure. Create a monster roll token attached to target creature you control. Okay, so you have someone take on a monster roll, and then on the backside, you play it as a four, three trampler. Okay, that one I'm not as uh, upset about. Okay, let's talk about Grabby Giant real quick. Grabby Giant is a four, three with reach. And it has the activated ability, pay two colors, a red, and sacrifice an artifact or a land, draw a card. Pretty good. Pretty good effect. Um, what else does it do? That's mine. Instant adventure for a colorless and a red, create a treasure token. It's pretty silly. Um, it doesn't fling, which makes it bad. <laughs> I, I want my... I want my grabby giants to be throwing people. Like, grab a goblin and throw it. Uh, drawing a card is not bad, especially in red, because like you, red doesn't have a whole lot of effects that just straight up draw cards, at least not without a significant drawback. So that could be, it could be a thing. Who knows? Okay, next up we think Hamlet Gutlin, or Hamlet Glutton. It's a 6-6 six, six for seven mana. Creature Giant, Bargain. This spell costs two less to cast if it was bargained. Okay, so knock it down to a five. Trample. When Hamlet Glutton enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Okay. He, he, he comes in and he eats one of your uh, your food tokens. Kellen's Lightblades. Okay, this is new. Kellen's Lightblades. One in a white instant. Bargain. Kellen's Lightblades deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. If this spell was bargained, destroy that creature instead. Okay, so this starts as like your average run-of-the-mill um, kill and attacking creature kind of thing. Um, but if you pay the kicker cost, which is the bargain, 
you get to just destroy any creature. Or, um, no. It, creature still has to be attacking. Um, attacking or blocking, I mean. Um, but instead of dealing three to it, you're just going to straight up kill it. So, that's pretty decent. Yeah. I, I can see the bargain really paying dividends there. Yeah. Kindled Heroism. One red, instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and gains first strike until on a turn. Yeah, not bad. And you, and you get to scry one. So, yeah. This is a single red. We've seen this effect of four. I think this is a direct reprint from uh, New Cabana. Leaping Ambush. Target creature gets plus one, plus three, and gains reach until on a turn. On a turn. Okay, that's actually a pretty good card. So, let's look at this. It's called Leaping Ambush. It costs like a single grain. It says instant. Target creature gets plus and plus three and gains reach until on turn. Untap it. Great defensive card. Um, you can protect a creature from damage by giving it plus one plus three. Um, you can protect it from getting removed from by tap effects like um, uh, the Wandering Emperor. Um, or you can just use the creature to block. Yeah. Yeah, so it's honestly not that bad. Yeah. In a pretty good combat trick. Yeah. Misleading modes. Three colorless and a blue. Instant. Target creature's owner puts it on the top or bottom. Of okay. It's just another detour effect. Yeah. We've seen this a million times. Obirus Attendance. Four colorless and a blue for a 3 4 flyer. Desperate Party is an in instant adventure. It says target creature gets minus four, minus so, until on a turn. Okay, it's just a distract. <clears throat> a just a distracting effect. Plunge into water. Tap up to one target creature, scry one, then draw a card for two mana. Uh, that's actually doing quite a bit for only two mana that I would not feel bad playing it. Does a lot more than a twiddle. Protective Parents is two to white. For a 3-2 human peasant. When protective parents dies, create a young hero roll token attached to up to one target creature you control. Okay, so they, they save the kid, and the kid becomes a hero. That's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, I've seen this one already. This is quick study. And people are losing their mind over this, at least. So, it's instant draw two cards. It is the first instant speed divination. Divination is draw two cards for three mana, but it's sorcerer speed. This is the first time this effect has been printed without any kind of drawback. And it's instant. So it's pretty damn good. This is called Red Tooth Genealogist. For two and a green, you get a 2-3 elf advisor. When Red Tooth Genealogist enters the battlefield, create a royal roll token attached to another target creature you control. Oh, is that it? That's all it does? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it it comes in, gives another creature plus and plus one and ward one. So it's it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's definitely not the best. Rhyme for a reindeer. Three colors and a white. Three four elk. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. Okay. Cool. So that's another player for the Azorius tap down deck. Okay. Root Rider Fawn. Interesting. So it's for one, th one three at a cost casting cost of one and a green. You tap it to add a green or pay one and tap to add a man of any color. Yeah, that's all right. And probably the best part about it is the fact that its toughness is three. Savior of the Sleeping, two colors and a white for a two three Vigilance Human Knight. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Savior of the Sleeping. Okay, again, not too bad. Uh, Scarecrow Guide. Uh, two, one for two. Reach. Add one mana of any color. All right. Scream Puff. What the hell? Okay. Four, five for four colors and a black. Creature Horror Death Touch. Whenever Scream Puff deals combat damage to a player, create a food token. Oh my god. These food things are so wild. Okay, here's a very interesting one. And I think I'm either overlooked this or I have not reviewed this one yet. So let's take a look. Shatter the Oath, three colors, two black. Sorcery, destroy target, creature, or enchantment. Create a wicked roll token 
attached to up to one creature you control. Okay, so here's the thing about this is this can kill either a creature or an enchantment. Any creature enchantment. There's no stipulations there. Um, the reason this costs so much is because you're doing something that black should not be have access to. You're killing enchantments. And anytime you break the color wheel to give an effect like this to a, a color that doesn't normally get it, you're going to be paying through the nose for it. It's, it's unfortunately just the, the fact of the matter. Like, I would love to have this effect on a better card, a card that maybe comes into play and does it, or a card that costs like two less. But the unfortunate fact of the matter is you're not going to get that on a card like that. So that's that. This is called Stockpiling Celebrant. Two and a white for a 3-2 Dwarf Knight. That's new. Whenever Stockpiling Celebrant enters the battlefield, you may return another target non-land permanent you control to his owner's hand. If you do, scry two. Oh, okay. So you um, you just bounce something. Non permanent. Okay, it has to be one that you control. It can't be uh, something your opponents control. Yeah. Otherwise, that would be just a little bit too powerful. Yeah, that's that's not bad, honestly. Like, give you a way to reuse um, comes into play effects. Um, unfortunately, you'll have to recast the thing again. It, this would be better if this was a blink effect, but you can't have everything. Territorial Witch Stalker. One in a green for a 2-3 defender. Wolf. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, Territorial Wind Stalker, Witch Stalker, gets a plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. And can attack this turn as though it didn't have Defender. Pretty good. I like it. Uh, titanic Growth. Yeah, this is just a reprint of the old Titanic Growth. Uh, give a creature plus four, plus four for a green and a colorless. Not bad. Wicked Visitor. One in a black for a 2-2 two -two Nightmare. For some reason, the art tells me that this should have like flying or something, but it doesn't. Uh, whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So this is a great like blood artist, aristocrat style card, but for enchantments. And honestly, if you want to go the route of the aristocrat, you can just run the artifact or um, the enchantment creatures um, from Kamigawa. The enchantment creatures, the enchantment sagas like Okiba Reckoner Raid, things like that. Um, yeah, that could honestly just be like a little bit of a uh, of a role player in enchantment creature decks yeah not bad you could honestly we've got enough support we could probably make a green black enchantment deck instead of the usual green white i have to work on that <clears throat> which is mark one and a red sorcery you may discard a card if you do draw two cards create a wicked roll token attached to up to one target creature control Okay, so it's like a Reckless Impulse style card uh, with a upside of attaching a plus one plus one counter to something. Not bad. Okay, so now that we've seen all of the cards in the set, um, it's time for our thoughts. What are we thinking? Are we going to buy into this set? How heavily are we going to buy into this set? And what kind of decks are we going to be building with this? So initial thoughts is this set feels underpowered but only when you put it in context next to the other high powered sets that are currently in standard like brothers war was a really good set um phyrexia all will be one was a really good set um new Capenna and kamigawa neon dynasty like really 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 strong cards in all of those sets that doesn't mean that this set doesn't have good cards in it. It absolutely does. And it has a lot of cards that I'm very excited to play with. But how many of these new cards are going to just be outshined by previous cards that are already established? So I'm, I'm thinking we'll probably see maybe 20 to 30% of the cards that we've seen get played in standard. There is a lot of draft chaff in this set. But, you know, it's, 
it's a direction that I'm not upset about. Like the the standard environment is incredibly strong right now, in part to the fact that we are doing a three year standard this year. Um, the fact that um, Midnight Hunt through Nuka Pena did not rotate this year means that we are going to be stuck with the same stuff for the next entire year. And so we're going to be expecting to see more of the same. So we're going to be comparing anything that comes out for the rest of the year against the last three years of standard play. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. So a lot of things are going to be overshadowed. Um, as far as what mechanics I'm excited to play with, um, I really like Bargain. Um, I love the self-sacrifice um, style of play, be that uh, Rakdos, Golgari, or, um, or Orzov. Um, I love sacrificing my own permanence for profit. And I really think that a Golgari style deck can really hit the mark. I've been trying to make a Golgari Braids deck work for a long time, and I've had some limited success with it. But I really think all of the, like, the food tokens from Black and Green specifically are going to kind of push it over the edge. So I would that will definitely be like the first deck that I build day one is going to be um, Golgari food. Um, aside from that, um, seeing the adventures come back is exciting for me personally because I never got to play with the original adventures. I was not playing during that time. I came in after. So I'm excited to play with those. It's going to be fun. Um, we'll, we'll see which ones make the cut, though. Because, like, a lot of them, a lot of the adventures, when compared against, like, the old ones, feel lesser. But they're all attached to pretty decent creatures. So I'm thinking that the the goal this time around for the adventures was to just attach them to like like beefier creatures. I noticed that a lot of the more played adventures from the previous um Throne of Eldraine were attached to like smaller um more utility based creatures like the like the fairies and whatnot. So um adventures looks like fun. Definitely um celebration just looks like alliance with extra steps so i'm not too um happy with celebration we'll we'll probably build something around it just to do like a showcase of the mechanic but it's a uh, it's a little uninspired, you know. It, it just it just reminds me of Alliance from uh, from New Capenna. So we'll play with it, but I'm it doesn't it doesn't blow my socks off much in the way that Bargain does. Like Bargain has has my brewer brain moving. Celebration really doesn't. Um, aside from that, yeah, I think that's pretty much my thoughts on the set as a whole. Um, I am excited to crack my packs and I'll probably make a video for that as well. So if you want to live vicariously through my pack opening, you'll have that opportunity. So yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be it for today's video. So uh, I'd like to thank you very much for hanging out with me today and going through all these new fancy cards. Um, and hopefully your pack openings are as good as mine, if not better. So until then, you take care of yourselves.